Okay, guys, we are back. Sorry for the um, technical difficulties. We had just introduced Posey and she was going to tell us how she started writing. Okay, so um, I've always written um, like early on, like when I was a teenager and my friends loved to hear my stories. And so um, even in college, I would write, I would like write my stories by hand. And one day my husband asked me, I know it's super crazy. <laughs> um, he asked, he was like, um, why don't you write anymore? And have you ever thought about writing again? And I was like, I don't know. I don't really have time. And he was like, you should try it. And so um, I didn't even have a laptop at the time. And I had to write on my phone at first. And so I did that for a long time. And then I got a laptop and and I start start writing again. And um, I don't know, it was so crazy because I went on Facebook and I start asking if anybody wanted to um, read my story, like just like the, like a little snippet or whatever. And then readers were like, oh, I like this. And I was like, oh, okay. So I got like a tiny little audience <laughs> and um, I kept going from there. And it's, and that's how Samantha Posey was born. So, yep. <laughs> Are you muted? Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, okay. I was like, oh no, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I know you have multiple pen names. Um, would you tell us no. why you chose to do that and then um what you write under each name? Yes. Um, well, I wrote Pleasurable Secrets when I was running for USA Today bestselling author, and it is more of a mainstream book, but it was like one of my characters um, from Billionaire Stripper, and um, it didn't do that great under my name, so I said, you know what, maybe I should try and just create another pen name, so I created Zoe Blaze, um, and it seems like it works out by me having more than one name. Um, that is more like small town contemporary, uh, billionaire romance. Um, right now, I just have the Mountain Men series under that pen name. Um, I also have um, my other pen name, Brooke Jordan. That is more bully romance, um, high school romance. Um, and so those are the only other two pen names right now. I have a third one coming, but I don't want to say what it is yet until I see um, <laughs> how it goes. But it'll be uh, paranormal. Oh, paranormal. Yeah. That's going to be fun. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited. I love vampires. Um, anything supernatural, like the show Supernatural is my favorite. So I'm like um, basically about to start creating this entirely new world. So it's about to be awesome. Wow. <laughs> and you are great at building worlds. I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Oh, and Amaya is in the comments. She says, hey, girl. <laughs> hey, girl. Oh, my goodness. Can I come in here and see? I don't know. I hate being on my laptop. I be struggling. <laughs> so I can't see the comments right now. But... John Winchester is a terrible father. <laughs> well, here we go with that. Tell her don't start. Mm -mm. Don't We're start. not going there. <laughs> <laughs> Dean Winchester is my favorite character. We're not yes. going to go off about his dad. But, um, Dean, yeah, Dean I'm a Scotty. Superman. Yes. <laughs> okay. So now that we know how you started writing and your pen names, what is it that you love the most about writing? Um, getting lost in the characters. Um, a lot of times um, I would like to plot, but I'm not a plotter. I'm a panster. So like a lot of times I'll just see like, the book starting like I see the two characters like in a scene and then I'm like okay that, that looks good and then I'll start writing from there um and then what I'll do is I'll build a timeline of things that I feel that need to happen um uh, by the end of the book and yeah it's it's um it is so fun to me I just I just get lost in it I feel like writing is therapeutic for me like from mm -hmm. going through something major um, like I was going through something major when I um, uh, wrote uh, Red Moscato, Lunchtime Chronicles. Mm -hmm. And um, that book is very angsty because of that. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I just I just love to write. It's just awesome. And you mentioned earlier that you wrote and you started out writing on your phone and in notes. 
Do you yeah. still do that or do you do you do your notes on the computer now? Um, I you know what with this iPhone, I find that um like if I'm on a plane or something, I'll start out like like I said, I don't really plot, but like I'll build like I guess like I don't know what you call it, character arc. Mm -hmm. um, like what the character looks like, um, just like little important things that um, like for Franco, I have it in my phone, all the things that um, needed to happen in the story or like all the characters, there's so many characters. Um, so that yes, those those notes are in my phone. Um, I okay. actually have plotter. That's what makes it so bad. Um, <laughs> I, so sad. Um, so I'm trying to get back into using plotter, but because I have this Mac, I'd be struggling. Okay. My plotter is more so on my um, HP laptop. Okay. Um, so I'm trying to learn how to get those files converted over to my Mac so I can get better at just building my timelines on my laptop instead of my phone. <laughs> okay. And I know one thing I've always wondered with you because all of your characters tie into all your other books. How do you keep everything straight? Is there like a mm -hmm. notebook that you have? And do you have like all these little, I don't know what, tell me, how you do yeah. that? <laughs> Well, sad story is um, I had a character Bible on Scrivener and it was awesome. I had all my all my stuff for Hidden Witness um, on Scrivener. And then my um, what do you call it? The flash drive. It crashed. Mm -hmm. My daughter broke oh. it by accident. So I lost everything. Um, so I had to start from scratch, basically. That's why I have Plotter. So now I can put all those notes in there. So it's just like it's starting from scratch. It's, it's so messed up. I hate this, but um, I do keep everything either on my phone in notes or now in plotter. Okay. Awesome. Cause I'm like, how does she keep everything straight in the continuity? Is yes. I mean, girl, sorry. sometimes I'll go back to a book like on um, in draft to digital. Cause just the other day I was like, Oh my God, what happened to that character? that killed so-and-so. Oh, let me find that name really quick because I don't have it in my character Bible anymore. And yep, pulled it up and was able to input it into Assassins and Mob Wives. <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> yeah. Hey, right. speaking of Assassins and Mob Wives, you have a second <laughs> oh. one coming out. So, <laughs> yes. Oh my goodness. You, you, yeah. I know you don't have um, a specific date, but do you, you have it up for pre-order, right? No, I don't have it up for pre-order. I, oh. I can't put myself under that kind of pressure and then break the pre-order date. Okay. Um, writing Assassins and Mob Wives is, um, is, is hard because I'm writing for so many different characters. Um, mm -hmm. There's at least 28 POVs. Um, so, yeah, it might be 35. I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to, like, still play around with it and figure out who's going to do most of the talking. It's it's harder when you get that many POVs. The last book had 14 POVs. So okay. That's a it lot. just takes a while. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, I feel like um, the longer you, you've been writing, you build your craft. And so I don't want to rush my project. I want it to be great. And I think a lot of it is just the pressure of, you know, want it to be better than the last one, you know, so... Well, it's coming. Is. I'm hoping it comes this month. <laughs> hoping it comes this month. I, I really pray. <laughs> and you had those great book boxes for the, the first one. How did that go? Because I, mean, I saw um, it everywhere. Uh, the book boxes. Well, I have various book boxes. Um, the Assassins in My Wife's 2 book box. That's mm -hmm. the one that um, I sold in August. Mm -hmm. It sold out quick to. And um, so basically what happens is once this book releases, then everybody get their boxes. Okay. Um, these boxes are massive. Um, I have a hundred dollar box, $200 box and 250 and wow. the 250 boxes gets blankets, you know, um, wow. all kind of beautiful items. So um, yeah, I'm excited. I can't wait for the readers to see what they get in these boxes. I can't wait to see it too. <laughs> How do you determine what to put in the boxes? Because I have, I struggle with that. I'm like, I don't know what to put in the box. Um, you know what? For each book, I try and figure out like, like the characters' favorite things. You know, mm -hmm. um, like 
in Assassins and Mob Wives too. Raya, she's on this thing. She just had a baby. She's trying to lose weight. So it's all about her tumbler, her carrying this water tumbler around everywhere. Um, and so the girls, they get tumblers on the trip anyway. Um, so it's kind of like the same thing. I showed the Patreon members what the tumbler looks like. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, so all the girls get these tumblers, um, you know, like facial mask and all that kind of stuff. And so all that goes into the box. Any kind of like certain kind of drinks that they're drinking, like liquor uh, goes mm -hmm. into the boxes as well. Okay. So, yeah. awesome. <laughs> now, speaking of your girls going, because uh, I love the theme that they, they're supposed to be on a girl's trip, but it turns out different. <laughs> Girl, every time. It's the craziest <laughs> things. I don't know how my man comes up with this stuff. I'm right. And I'm like, you know what? <laughs> what if we do like this little get out scene they're in a bar and all the people kind of go psycho and target them to kill them so um <laughs> everybody talks about that scene like what in the heck will make you do that and, like it was lit <laughs> <laughs> awesome. i love taking crazy crap <laughs> <laughs> now when you write i know they say you're supposed to quote unquote, write drunk and edit sober? Do you actually uh, drink when you write? Or? Um, oh, usually, sometimes, very seldom. Uh, the most I usually drink is like coffee, but sometimes I'll drink wine at night while I'm writing. Like if I'm in a writing sprint, I will. Um, that's always fun. And yeah, you know, <laughs> you edit the next day. You're like, wait a minute, what was going on? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Like, you what? know, yeah. <laughs> it might get it might get a little spicy if anything. If I'm writing while I'm drinking. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's get into your Deluca because that's the main reason we're here, and we want to talk about Franco Deluca. How, let's see, why did you choose to join the Deluca world? Um, I felt it, I thought it was like an amazing concept. Um, I already write mafia. I was like, oh my goodness. I love this idea of joining this world. And, um, you know, it's based off of one particular character, but then you branch out and you create your own mobster who's a family member. Um, you know, and it's just, I just thought it was so cool. And then everyone, like everyone has their own city. Mm -hmm. I was like, man, this is lit, you know? <laughs> so um, yeah, I was very excited. And like I said, I don't really plot, but I really kind of put that together and try to like really um, piece everything together, how I wanted it to turn out for Franco's book. All right. And we have some, some ladies in the house. We got Kenya Wright. And Miss hey, Olivia yeah. James. Hi, Olivia. Right, ladies. <laughs> How y'all doing? <laughs> now, you mentioned um, that in the series, we all had our own uh, city. So you chose Portland for Franco. Yeah. Why did you choose that city? Because uh, Hidden Witness was created. Um, basically, Hidden Witness started off in New Jersey. But when Dylan had to go into hiding, he ended up in Portland, Oregon. Okay. So I was like, hmm. And of course, I'm like, oh, these characters know each other. It is, and I was like, okay, so Franco knows Dylan, and that does come up in the book. Mm -hmm. um, so I just thought it would be cool to go off Portland since I'd already written one of my stories in Portland before. Okay, awesome. Now, in this story, Kennedy um, was kind of giving me Cinderella vibes a little bit. Mm -hmm. Was that intentional or was that? I was really going for I, the struggle. Um, it was more of the ugly duckling kind of vibe I was trying to do because, but it, it's a combination if you think about this, um, a Cinderella because the stepsisters were um, mean to her. Um, mm -hmm. They called her ugly because she was dark skinned. Um, so I, I probably should have put that in the blurb too, that it had the Cinderella vibes. But yeah, basically, um, Kennedy had to go out and do the grunt work. She had to mm -hmm. hit the streets and sell dope for the family, uh, for her father and her uncle. So, um, and the sisters basically just sat back and just lived off 
you know, basically ate off her plate while she went mm -hmm. out there and worked hard. And then talk shit about her. Yes, <laughs> yes. I could stand her sisters. I was like, oh, yeah. She don't them? <laughs> yeah. I'm glad they got their due in the end. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, I the tunnels and all that. Yeah, that was that was that, great. That tunnel scene, that was awesome. I love that. <laughs> Girl, Pinterest is your friend when you're writing because a lot of times, like, you'll see something and you're like, How, where can I find something like this? And a lot of times I'll go to Pinterest and I can find something similar and put it on my Pinterest board. So it really gives me inspiration to, um, you know, build on the scene. Awesome. I love Pinterest. I always build a board for every story. So. Girl, hello. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now tell us how. Um, because each each main character they had trauma in their lives. They had different mm -hmm. trauma, but it, it was kind of they kind of worked it together. Tell us mm -hmm. how it brought them together instead of um like a lot of times it brings people apart. Um, they were they both like you said they both had this trauma. Kennedy with the sisters and um her father using her and um basically Franco he didn't want to be loved ever again after what happened to him. He was, I don't know if I can really tell, I don't know some of the story, but um, he was burned very badly on his back. And so basically his, his skin was marred. And so whenever he would, you know, interact with women, he would turn them away, like facing, you know, away from him. And so one of the things that Kennedy was pushing for was that face-to-face -face interaction mm -hmm. when it would be intimate. And I just thought that was so cool and that he wanted that with her. So, yeah, basically just, I don't know. I think that's something I probably do pretty good is using the trauma for each character to bring them together to make them a stronger couple. Okay. Now, um, also, you, you mentioned his, um, his scars on his back. What I love the most in the one scene where she was on the piano and he was touching her and he was telling, you know, he found a scar here and a scar there. And she kept telling him, oh, that was I got shot and I got stabbed. And I'm like, yeah, no. <laughs> I know. she was just as marred as he was. He yeah. Just couldn't see it. <laughs> right. And she, and she didn't really hide hers where he was. He yeah. was kind of traumatized by his, which was correct because. Yeah, you know, you get burned alive, <laughs> right? And then that purpose. rejection from his ex girlfriend that's what took it over the top. Like, she right. was like, What I can't be with you, you looking like that. And then that's when he just turned into this horrible, like, beast where he, you know, was standoffish and didn't love anyone and didn't want to be bothered with any women in an intimate way like that, right? Now, um, his assistant who he, he grew up with. Um, she was an interesting character also because I expected her to be like one of those jealous chicks that would be like, oh, I've always been in love with him. But that is not where you took that. And I'm glad that yeah. that made that character very, um, it stand, made her stand out. And I appreciated yeah. that. Yeah, she was like his right hand. I mean, he had a really tight crew. Mm -hmm. um, and I, and I, the little twist of her being with the other bodyguard mm -hmm. it was like oh I, that's like that'll be nice you know so she was really just always for him as a friend nothing ever intimate just you know whatever you need me to do and then she could see the signs oh you're getting her you're buying her clothes like who is she what is going on you don't do this kind of right. thing and know? that's when she first said that i was like oh she gonna be jealous because she ain't getting the clothes but nope <laughs> that's not where it went yeah <laughs> i love it Sometimes I'm good at figuring out what the, where the author is going to go, but not this time. So that was great. Great writing. <laughs> now, thank you. With Franco, I want to go back to that um the cave scene. You say you got it off of Pinterest and caves are like awesome and scary and, you know, the sisters ended up having guns what in the world where where did they learn to shoot because <laughs> they didn't do anything I know. 
I know. Um, well, you know, when your father's a drug lord, you got to be ready to go. You never know if someone's going to come and attack your home. So you still have to know how to fight back. Um, so, yeah, when they pulled out the ATVs and, you know, yeah, that was wild. Back, and, yeah, I, you know, I love a great action scene. I am going to do it up if I can, you know. Um, I love all action movies. <laughs> That's how I feel like. I'm like, oh, that, that I love that. Like I've been watching Reacher and I'm like, hmm, let's see what I can, oh, <laughs> you know, flip out of, take out of this um, and flip it and I add it to wait to see what you come up with after you watch Reacher. <laughs> I know. <laughs> now, one of the quotes from the book that stood out to me is when they were um getting ready to have their first um well, not intimate scene, but first time that they actually made love. She said, if the sex is bad, I'll jump off this table with my hand and run like my hair is on fire. If I didn't holler, I was like, oh my God. <laughs> oh my goodness. I, I always... Just... Go ahead. No, go ahead. I, uh, I always try and do that. some sort of comedy too. I don't know. I always got to try and crack a joke in the book. Um it's not like all romantic comedy, but there's like always some kind of comedy I inject into the books as well. But I thought that was funny. I was laughing when I wrote that part. I was like, this one is a fool. Yeah. She's like, I'm out of here. Uh-uh. I'm like, talk about ego break. <laughs> like, you better bring it, Franco. Cash, I'm out. <laughs> yeah. Now, with Franco, he swore he didn't, um, how do I say this gently, go down town. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he swore he didn't, but she was like, oh, yes, you are. <laughs> yeah, she was not playing like that. That's something I want. If you're not bringing it, you if you can't do Bye. that, <laughs> like, I'm mm -hmm. letting you know that right now, girl, shoot. I was, I was so proud of her. I, I was thinking about that. I think I was thinking about that DJ Khaled situation. I was oh. Like, <laughs> when I was writing the book, I was like, "Wait, what?" Now he know he, he need he the main one need to be doing it, girl. He hello, a little big energy everywhere. Yes, <laughs> yes. I'm like, you know, you need to be on your knees, quit playing. Mm -hmm. So well, yeah, I made mean, him um... <laughs> <laughs> something. But yeah, that was hilarious. That he once he got his first taste he was like addicted and i'm like mm -hmm. see he's always talking mess talking about you don't do something right <laughs> <laughs> i loved how you you already touched on the fact that he avoided intimacy when you have sex and when he did actually have it with kennedy she was like no you're gonna face me and look into my eyes and i love that yeah because he was trying to i think and one of those scenes, he was trying to pull back from it. Like he could feel himself trying to, um, you know, figure out a way to turn her around. And she was like, nope, you're not. Nope, we're not doing this. No, nope. you're going to face me. Yeah. I love that. Now, um, <laughs> she said he had a good dick and he was a nerd. So uh, <laughs> that was her uh, main goal. So <laughs> Yeah, because she had, you know, she just had very bad luck and you know as women we sometimes do have bad luck with men and it's like you know what i do not want a bad boy anymore i want a nerd a cute nerd um like you know you see the little tiktoks where the guy he's got on the glasses and then mm -hmm. next thing you know he's got tattooed chest and all of this You're like oh okay so <laughs> look nerd during the day and you freaking night okay so um she just let him know listen i i am not into bad boys anymore i need uh, i want a nerd i want someone who's intelligent who's gonna sit home and chill with me and he show her you know his nerd side oh my goodness i know she was like what wait no this can't be happening <laughs> <laughs> you can't no. be careful what you ask for <laughs> yep <laughs> And he was giving Chris Hemsworth vibes. So, uh, yeah, I want yeah. him to stay home, too. Let's stay home. <laughs> <laughs> not going oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, Thor. Oh, my goodness. I was I took that and ran with it. I just thought it was so hilarious. I think I had just start, uh, just finished watching those movies again, and I just thought it was funny. Chris Hemsworth is so hilarious in Thor. And I was like, this would be a nice little twist to 
play up this whole Thor uh, look-alike thing in the book. So <laughs> I liked his um his his bodyguards or his security. They were just like this dude here. What are we gonna do with him? Yeah, yeah, okay. clipping them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. I'm not going to go into too many details about the book because I want everybody to listen to it or read it. Yeah. So <laughs> we're going to do some rapid fire questions if you don't mind. And it's just okay. give me the first thing that pops in your head. Uh -huh. So okay. if you could be, if you could have any author's books in your library and it was just one author, who would it be? Oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> um, you know, it's so hilarious. Um, she doesn't even write anymore, I don't think. Um, but when I first got into IR, um, I read um A Marie mm -hmm. um Avant and um I read Teresa Hodges books and I read um what is it, DJ Parker? Is that her mm -hmm. name? Dipping in Sin. Oh my God, that mafia book was so fire. I would have to have Dipping in Sin in my library. Absolutely. Hands down. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, give us one thing that people should know about you that they mm -hmm. wouldn't necessarily know looking at you. Oh. Oh, rapid fire. Oh my God. Um. <laughs> I'm very silly. I mean, I don't know. I mean, you probably know that though. Dang, I'm, everybody might not know that, but I am very silly. Um, I'm almost fifty, but I probably act like I'm twenty. Um, my That's kids good. always laugh at me. <laughs> my kids always laughing at me, like, "Mom, what are you doing? Why are you acting <laughs> like that?" But yeah, so I'm like, I'm kind of like a kid at heart. Okay, That's a good mm -hmm. answer. Now, you already said you do, you have a Mac and a PC, so I won't ask that one. Mm -hmm. What is your favorite, well, you, you have, what is your favorite audio book? Maybe mm -hmm. not in your collection, but in your, in, in general. Oh, shoot. Oh, man. A lot of, a lot of um, people hate her. Um, you say yours, though. Don't worry about what um, anybody else like. <laughs> well, um. One of my most my my favorite audiobooks is honestly by LJ Shin. It's Broken Night. Um, it's one of the audiobooks I go back to and listen to kind of like over and over again sometimes. Like if I'm just feeling some kind of way and I just need something that just that's really angsty and it's just gonna pull the heartstrings. Yeah, Broken Night. Okay. If you could write, well, you do write in multiple genres, but if you could write <laughs> in any genre that you don't currently write in, what would it be? And you can't Ooh. say paranormal because you're going to start doing that. <laughs> um, hmm. um, hmm. And it doesn't have to be romance. Um. Well, probably like um, murder mystery thrillers kind of thing, but with still like I kind of do that already because I write romantic suspense. Um, there, I mean, see, it's kind of still the same though. Urban fantasy, um, anything to do with the supernatural is still paranormal. I, I guess historicals, maybe. I, hmm. That would be interesting. Yeah. Okay. If you could have a writing partner with any writer in the world, mm -hmm. who would it be? Ooh. I don't know. <laughs> I don't not someone that. that you always wanted. You could be living or dead. So I'm gonna put that in. Mm -hmm. Um. Oh. Terry McMillan. Oh. Awesome. I love we'll her get books. some movies. Oh <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Now, I'm going to say night owl or early bird, but you don't sleep, so. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I'm a, you know what? I've turned into an early bird um, because when I used to work and write, you know, I had to get up at 3 o'clock in the morning to write before I went to work. So I kind of still get up at 3 or 4 in the morning. It depends on if I have a really bad deadline to get up at 3. 
uh, for the most part, it's between four and five in the morning. So early, unfortunately. Wow. <laughs> I guess we're going to bed. <laughs> oh my goodness, really? I, I, I used late. to be a night owl. I feel like I flipped, you know, at some point in time. I I used to go to bed really late. I used to go to bed at like four o'clock in the morning. Now I get up early. It's crazy. I can't mm-hmm. do it. I've tried to go to bed like 11. I just lay there and my mind wow. is like gone. I'm like, yeah. let me get up and write. Because oh. <laughs> I just can't lay there. Yeah, Kenya Gorbell, I would go on her TikTok and I see them writing. Girl, I'm like, I just sit there looking at them like, you're crazy. It's 10 o'clock at night. What y'all doing? She's like, come on, Posey. I'm like, no. Good night. (laughs) Now tell us what the best compliment you've ever received. Oh. Um, that um, my books have gotten people through some really hard times in their lives and um, they've escaped by reading my books. Awesome. Who would you like to be stranded on an island with? It could be anybody. Um, Dean Winchester. (laughs) (laughs) There she go with that Winchester again. As long as ain't no spooky stuff going on. <laughs> right. <laughs> what is the biggest risk you've ever taken? Hmm. Oh man. Um, I don't really know if it's a risk. Um my job was ending in 2018. Um, so I was I was thinking about becoming a full time author. Um, and I but I ended up being severance from my job. And so I became a full-time author. Uh, my husband does work. So it's like, I'm a full-time author because I'm able to stay at home. But it's like, I, I still have that stability where, you know, my husband has insurance and stuff like that. Um, but I would say that's the biggest risk because I've been at home since 2018. So I haven't gone back to corporate America yet. So, What's the worst piece of avi- advice you have ever received? <laughs> I won't say it. <laughs> it was you don't bad. have to tell me who gave it to you. Just tell me I, what it was. <laughs> mm. Um. Oh, someone said something. Another author. I don't want to say it. I'm mean, gonna think of something else because that's okay. gone. Because I don't want to call anybody out. Um. <laughs> worst piece of advice. I mean, I'll just say kind of what basically they probably told me. I I need to hire them as a ghostwriter. I don't know. Well, I don't know if she is, is in here. I don't know. A ghostwriter? But. You don't need a ghostwriter? Okay. Anyway. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> but here I am. I'm still here, so. <laughs> okay. Well, what is, who is your favorite book boyfriend out of all of your characters, if you can choose? Oh, oh we. Um, Dominic Magarelli. Ooh. Yeah, he's my favorite. He's my um I know I, I know readers love Dylan. Um but Dominic is like a psychopath and I, I <laughs> love channeling that. I don't know why. He is just like a mass murderer or something. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> she says he's a psychopath and I love him. <laughs> now if you could be any character in a book, who would you be? Oh. Um, well, and I know my readers gonna have something to say about this because they kind of can't stand her. She's like my Beyonce of books. Um, Samantha Posey. Uh, well, Samantha Ladder is my first character. Um, she's my first assassin, and she's kind of I feel like she's kind of like the matriarch of my book world. Um, she's a badass and I she's my favorite character. <laughs> you be a badass assassin. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. You now, do you prefer to do um like when you work on other projects, do you prefer to work in a shared world or an mm-hmm. anthology where mm-hmm. you can do your own thing? You really you really put me on the spot here. No. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I don't do anthologies anymore. If I can, if I can help it, um, 
I probably have some really negative things to say about about them. Um, I don't know. Sometimes my readers are coming to me like, "Oh my god, like when is the actual book coming out so I can read your book?" I'm like, "Oh my god, no, read the whole, read everybody's books," you know. Um, so I mean, you know, you, you're becoming a USA Today best an author. You gotta, you're in an anthology, um, and it's a lot of work. Um, but in a shared world, I feel like it's still a lot of work. But if you think about it, it's no more than what you would do for your own book, right. if that makes sense. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, it's under your name, under your account. Um, but of course, you're, you know, I love pushing everybody else's books, too. Mm-hmm. It's just a little different. I, I like, um, I would say the easiest share, two of the easiest share worlds I've ever worked in was Lunchtime Chronicles. Well, I did take that a little too far. And Sierra said, hey, don't put Messy Mandy too much into the story. That was hilarious. <laughs> um, yeah, kind of messed that up a little bit. But I, I, I love writing in that world. Um, and um, of course, the DeLucas. I just, ah, you know, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so share world. Good. Yeah, share world. Sorry. <laughs> no. Round about ways in. Share world. <laughs> Don't be sorry. Because <laughs> you're like, what kind of questions are you asking me? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you give me the girl. You give me tonight, girl. But you know what? <laughs> <laughs> I am not trying to. <laughs> Okay, here's a fun one. Would you rather date a sexy billionaire or a hot biker? Hmm. I'm a sexy billionaire. Um, you know, just I'm, I'm about to write my first biker book. I'm so nervous. Oh my goodness. You have no idea. I you are the pro at this. I am oh, not. I'm oh. like, oh my <laughs> goodness. What am I walking into? Um, I gotta go brush up on my sons of anarchy and all of that. Girl, so, you write mafia, you'll be just fine. <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. But I would I would go with the billionaire. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm gonna choose the biker every time. Yeah, I know. <laughs> See? But I think maybe that'll change once I write my character. So we'll see. And can you tell us who you're gonna be writing with for oh. your biker? You know, I was wondering like how much we could say, you know how we do our thing on Wednesdays? in the group in Sin City. Um, But you'll be there. So (laughs) you can tell us the the shared world you're in. Oh, since it was Sin City MC, MC girl, listen, I'm trying to hold them all together. I have another shared world I'm in too coming up sooner than that one. So I'm trying to hold them all together. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, But I'm writing about an enforcer which is right up my alley because Tony was an enforcer. So I think um, I do pretty good with that. I've been showing all those pretty bikes in the group and everything. So Mm -hmm. And the hot guys. Oh, yeah. Why should you get these pictures? (laughs) That's my little secret now. (laughs) (laughs) I'll be scouting out here. (laughs) Oh, gosh. She's going to be in season three of Sin City MC. And I can't wait. It's going to be lit. New Orleans. Everybody is coming. Forward. Yeah, we are going to bring it. We are bringing it. New Orleans. I'm like, oh, my God, this is going to be fire. Oh, my goodness. I can't wait. This is going to be so much fun. But that's way in the summer. So, yo. I know. Get- <laughs> we'll be putting up. I think we'll be doing pre-order soon. So maybe get a little bit. But- oh, oh, yeah. Oh, shoot. Get old pre-orders. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> If you could vacation anywhere in the world, all expenses paid, mm. where would you go? And who would you oh, take shoot. with you? Oh, shoot. Anywhere in the world. Mm. You know, I'm going to go with, um, I mean, right. Well, it's, it was actually in Franco's book, Greece. Um, go with Greece because I haven't been there. I've been to Paris, been to um, London. So yeah, I'm gonna say Grace. Um, who would I take with me? Um, oh, you know what? Because I'm in the I'm in I'm the vibes. It would be like a girl trip. Me and all my girls, we would oh, go for real. Just have fun, yes. Oh. <laughs> I'm gonna be a little salty. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Well, we go other places together. He he'll be all right. <laughs> Now, do you follow the royals? 
at all? You you know what? A little bit. And I was when I was on a plane um last month, I started watching what is it, Crowned or something. Mm-hmm. I think I'm like on the third episode. It's very interesting. I I want to watch more, but I'm I'm afraid I'll I'll, st- I'll try and binge watch it. So mm-hmm. I'm trying to like take my time with it, you know. But yeah, a little bit. I'm, what's your okay, question? So about the who's your favorite royal? Well, you already know it's Harry, Harry. but uh, <laughs> yeah, it's Harry. It's like Harry. <laughs> <laughs> He's a sweetheart. <laughs> he is. Now, um, I you talked about binge watching. I just binge watch. Um, what's the the series with Eva Marshall, uh, all the Queen's men. Have you started girl, that? Girl, Talk about I Queen's started men. that. I start that, and that was another one. I'm like, oh my goodness, I could quickly fall fall down a rabbit hole and end up watching. I watched like I think like three episodes in one day. I said, okay, you got to pull back because you gonna never get nothing written. That's girl. my problem. I got so many projects that I I can't get too caught up in a in a show, but that show is fire. That show is crazy. I hate strippers. I love it. But oh, other than yeah. the strip club thing, <laughs> you know what? Like, too. Yeah, I I'm like when I would have to go to like a bachelorette party or something, and it's at a strip club. I was like, why? Why do we I have to do like this? I don't like male strippers. I just don't. me ugh, neither. But can. watching them in the show is crazy. It doesn't bother me. I don't know, but she is. She is. She don't. She don't play, she don't play. no. Yeah, just be shooting like, people for no reason. Like, girl, oh, her face you know expressions what? like you gonna either fall in line, <laughs> you gonna die, right? <laughs> <You're> gonna die. <laughs> I'm like, I like her. Yeah, she came a long way since top model. <laughs> okay, and she bringing it. Okay, so we're gonna wrap up really soon, but I want you to tell. Um, are you doing any events this year? Oh wow. Yeah. I had to um cancel Polycon. Oh no. Um, yeah, some family um things were going on behind the scenes. I posted it in my group. Um, so I can't go to a Polycon, but I have um the Book Boozy Tour mm-hmm. um in June in Chicago. Chicago, okay. He's going home. Mm-hmm. And then I have Steamy Lit in uh California in August. Awesome. And in everybody's fact, going to that. Oh man! Yes, I'm excited. That's gonna be my kids are excited. They try and come on these trips, and it's a city they <laughs> want to go to. They little users, you know how kids are. They're little users. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> yeah, I want to go too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, and then back to the book boozy tour. Um, I think it's October in Denver. Oh, okay, you go to the Denver and Chicago. And in December, Houston for book, book, oh. um, boozy book tour. Yeah. Why you didn't come to Charlotte? We could have kicked it. <laughs> um, it was already it was full oh. by the time I found out. Yeah, because I'm like I could have just drove to Charlotte. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely, five hours, six hours, something like that. Yeah, I could have drove there, so that would have been great. But yeah, there's no room for me. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'll be in Charlotte, but. I think Derry McCoy will be here with me. So I'll be all right. Cool. <laughs> and you're doing TNT. Yes. I'm so excited. Yeah. I was, I did TNT in New York. So I was excited I to it. see. It was, oh my God, it is crazy. It's a huge signing. Um, it, you were going to be just like, you're going to have whiplash. It's just like, it's just so much <laughs> going on at one time, but it's a lot of fun. You're going to, you're going to enjoy it. I'm yeah. so happy it's coming to Charlotte, though. I think that's that's lit. It's in Raleigh this year. Oh, it's in Raleigh. Okay, it's, it's in Raleigh, North yeah. Carolina, though. Basically, mm-hmm. what I'm saying, it's in the South. Yes. So. <laughs> I'm so excited. I'm like, because you know I'm a biker nut. I yeah. love bikers, so. And they have their own little biker club. I'm like, Man. Yes, girl. <laughs> and the models be there and stuff. So, yeah, it's a lot that's going on. It's going to be lit. You're going to love it. Okay. I can't wait for that. <laughs> <laughs> That's coming in March, so. Yeah, it's coming up quick. Oh, Next month. Uh, <laughs> I hope you're ready. <laughs> I am. <laughs> I've done all my orders. I got my pre-orders Good. up. That's so, awesome. I'm ready. Okay, yeah. so what are you currently working on? Because I know you brought working on 10 books at one time. <laughs> 
I know. Oh my goodness. Um, of course, Assassins and Mob Wives too. Um, I'm working on a billionaire's clash with love, which is Adam's story. Everybody's wanted that for a long time. It's a long time in the making. That is a spinoff from Nikki's Love Torn. Uh, that was a um, a love triangle. So he's finally getting his story. Um, and I'm working on those three Vellas. And oh. I'm about to start writing that paranormal. That's enough for right now. Yeah. yeah. I have a lot to write this year. Again, I'm going to, I'm 2025. I am not writing all these books. I'm sorry. Yeah, I love right. y'all. You but... said that last year. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, so, I'm, listen, I'm thinking about releasing some of this stuff on Patreon and, and I, I got to pull back because I, I, I'm a workaholic and it's got to stop. <laughs> <laughs> How are you enjoying the Vela? Um, it is, it's fun. It is really fun. Um, I love writing all those characters. It was so crazy because I told the readers I was going to create, um, the bodyguard world. And, um, I was like, you know what, instead of releasing this, like in a, a novella, let's see how it work on novellas. And yeah, it turned out to work really well. So I don't have to release it on ebook. You know, one of them I did, but the rest of them, like Ezra and Catch, they'll just stay on Vela. I'm not releasing those on ebook, but I like it. Um, I usually try and release one to two um, Bella episodes a week. Okay, for those. Awesome. And if people wanted to join your Patreon, where would they find you? Is it just um, under Posey Parks? Or? Yeah, under Posey Parks. I'm on uh, under Posey Parks on Patreon. Marine stories and also i have membership on buy me a cup of coffee as well so yeah. they can enjoy all of the things and how is speaking of that how is your dunkin addiction going <laughs> it's still going strong it is so sad they had the audacity to have two dollar coffees every day i was like these people are gonna see me all the time and it's bad because my dunkin the people at my dunkin they know me they be like hi cozy <laughs> They be trying to give me extra stuff too. I'm like, you know, it's okay, but yeah, it, it's a bad addiction. <laughs> I guess if you had to have an addiction, coffee is better than yeah. all the other stuff that's out here. So that's true, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we talked about your book events and what you got coming up. Tell everybody, which they already should know, where to find your bo your books and make sure that they know about your website. Okay. Um, of course, you can find me um, on Amazon. Um, a billionaire, let me see, billionaire stripper, not giving up. Those books are wide, so you can find those everywhere. But everything else is on Amazon. Um, you can find my books also on poetryparks.com. I have a Facebook group. Um, what Pandora's box? Posey Pandora Pandora's box. Mm -hmm. It's my Facebook group and. My page is Posey One Perks. Okay. And you can find me on TikTok. I got like 30 accounts on TikTok. But 30. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you can just find you can just look for me on TikTok under author Posey Parks, or um, I think it's Posey Parks. My other one, Posey One Parks. Let, let's see, I got too many. I know that's why <laughs> I have like a whole little thing with all my stuff. It's so I'm on, I'm on Snapchat too, you know, Posey 30 Parks. But we stick to the basics, TikTok and Facebook, Instagram, author Posey Parks. Okay. And go to her Pinterest to see, yes. see her world. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I, I had to start um, getting into making some of those boards secret because I was like, I'm revealing Ooh. too much before the book come out. So. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's a lot of good stuff out there on Pinterest. Awesome. <laughs> All right. We have any questions from you guys that that are listening? I see you in the comments, but nobody's right asking questions. All right, get them in before she leaves. Because mm -hmm. Posey is a busy lady. Damn, I got to go write some okay. Vellas. Get back in the Tory Vella <laughs> so I can get it <laughs> uploaded tomorrow. Okay, well, I appreciate you coming on and talking about. I have one last question, and it was about the audio book. Um, the, the way that it was done, mm -hmm. you chose to do the virtual. I'm sure you were like, a, um, what was it? They do the little, they chose a, you to, to become the virtual. 
Yeah, it's a beta program oh. through Amazon. Mm -hmm. And they asked, they said that my books, um, I could put my books in virtual audio. Mm -hmm. um, so out of like, I don't know, 30 something books, probably 20 qualify. Um, but I have not put all of them on audio. I just picked certain ones. I picked, I think, like six books so far. I'm going to add um, a couple more, um, mm -hmm. but it's fairly easy. Um, yeah, because I write such big books, the cost for me to do audio uh, would be astronomical. Yeah. Um, as an indie author, I mean, I do okay, but you know, to say, oh, I'm gonna just shell out thirty five hundred for an audio book right now. Unfortunately, I can't do it. If I can, you know, um, create a Kickstarter where I can raise money to, um, you know, get audio books create it, then I'll go that route, you know, eventually. But um, and that's why I was saying I have to slow down with writing because I, I need to be able to have time to do the other stuff behind the scenes stuff. And the way I'm writing, I don't have time to do any kind of behind the scenes stuff. It's, it's like I'm just on the hamster wheel. So but yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, it's pretty cool. The guy that I chose for the um, the voice, they they add they add more voices as the program goes along. And um, one of uh, my author friends was like, oh, my God, that voice that you chose for um, Franco uh, was pretty good. So I was like, OK, that's that's good. Yeah, I liked his voice. Um, I just wish they would make it more personable. Yeah, because, I know. Because he'll say, wow, and just keep going. And I'm like, what? Yeah, <laughs> oh, I know. Uh, yeah, I know. Trust me, I, I would love to have beautiful books on audio with dual narration and stuff like that. I'm just yeah. like, I ain't balling like that. I'm sorry. You know, Girl, your books are so long. <laughs> yeah. I, I like novellas, so I'm good. <laughs> yeah. My assistant was like, you know, maybe you should start writing shorter books, like 50,000 words. I was like, yeah, I'm probably Can you? <laughs> I know. Yeah. I'm going to have to, I'm switching from cliffhangers to standalones and interconnected standalones. So uh, the books would be no longer than 60, 80,000 words at the absolute most. But okay. yeah, I'm capping it now at 60,000. So I can try and get the, you know, books um, released faster. But Assassins and My Wives, I don't know how I can get that no. under 80. That one's you know. got to be longer. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's a shorter chapters, but, you know, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> well, awesome. Well, I appreciate you discussing your book with us tonight and taking your Friday evening out because I know you got kids and a husband and you know got things yeah, you to know do. somebody <laughs> outside the door waiting on me to ask a question. They I already saw um a text <laughs> talking to me ask a question. <laughs> Knocking on the door mama <laughs> you know yeah <laughs> okay well, I'll let you get back to your family and thank you so much for joining us. Thank and you so much for having you me. You guys, make sure you listen to the audiobook. And next week, I believe we have, let me see. Next week, we are doing author Rihanna Mallory. So yeah. make sure you join us next week. Hey, thanks, Posey. Thank Good night, y'all. Good night.